In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and with, also you. with you. You are very welcome again to our service of Holy Communion on the second Sunday after Trinity. We hope that soon uh, St Oswald's will be open for private prayer, maybe a few times a week, and we'll, of course, let you know as soon as that happens. And soon after that, we hope other churches may open too. We may someday be able to meet together in person again to worship the Lord. The way we do church will inevitably change, but at its heart, we all remain focused on worshipping God, on caring for the lost and vulnerable, on bringing life in all its fullness, and we will celebrate. And we've lit some candles this time, and we've moved to a different place in the church as well, perhaps just to remember. The prayer of preparation. Please sit or kneel as we say together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Just a moment of silence. We say together, Almighty God, our, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, we, we have, have sinned, sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If you can stand, please stand for the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please sit or kneel as we have a period of just silent prayer before I say the collect. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
please remain seated for the gospel for the reading. This morning's first reading is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20. In this reading, this is immediately after Jeremiah has been flogged and imprisoned overnight for warning the people of coming the coming defeat by the Babylonians, Jeremiah pours out his heart to God. He cannot stop preaching, but yet has to suffer for it. He finishes by expressing his trust in God. Jeremiah cried out, O Lord, you've enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more of his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonour will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus summoned the twelve and sent them out with the following instruction. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they call the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the rooftops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted, so do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be the members of one's own household. 
whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And let those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. That was a picture of a tiger that Nigel and I were privileged to meet on safari in India some two years ago. What a magnificent beast she is. Did you know that when tigers hunt, they have a remarkable capacity for causing their prey to paralyze with fear? When the tiger roars, it lets out sound waves that are audible. They are the ones that sound terrifying but it also lets out a sound at a frequency so low you can't hear it, but you can feel it. And so as the tiger emerges from the undergrowth, the flashing of its colors, the sound of its roar, and the impact of the unheard but felt sound waves combine to provide an all out assault on your senses. The effect is that you are momentarily paralyzed. So even though there may be time to avoid the tiger, you're tricked into standing still long enough for the tiger to leap on you. Fear is the one word that leaps out at me from both our readings this morning. Do you think the first disciples were paralyzed with fear? Jesus' disciples courageously left the security of their homes to follow him as they proclaimed the advent of God's reign. But they too knew and ultimately bowed down before the power of fear. Three times in this passage, Jesus says, do not be afraid. Actually, those words are the most commonly used words throughout the Bible. In a way today, we face a very real fear from the COVID-19 pandemic. As hard as it may be for us to accept and understand, Jesus says to us today, do not be afraid. Each one of us is more precious to God than many sparrows. I'm not sure how much a sparrow is worth, but you get the message. God loves us and treasures us, each one of us. We who call ourselves disciples of Christ need to recognize that our faith is being challenged. We may find it much more difficult to pray in lockdown, feel isolated and lonely and doubts may begin to crowd in. Anxieties about all that is going on in our lives and around about us can paralyze us with fear. But these things, rather than worldly threats, are what we should really be afraid of. Afraid of being drawn away from God, of losing our souls and compromising the mission in which to, into which he calls us. The first disciples were afraid in the context of the situation that they were in, but they knew that God was in control. We've heard that God loves each one of us more than many sparrows. And so much so that every hair on our head is numbered. Which I suppose at the moment is even more evident than usual, seeing that hairdressers are closed at least till the beginning of July. The first disciples weren't promised an easy ride and neither are we. So today, if we were faced with a dilemma where we have to confirm or deny our belief in Jesus, would we take that risk? Well, we believe that Jesus is with us and has already defeated the most powerful enemies on the cross. Surely then the answer is yes. 
and we can hear with confidence our Lord's reassuring words, do not be afraid. Amen. Please stand as we declare the faith we share and we'll turn to the altar. Do you believe and trust in God, the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? Do you believe and trust, and trust in him? Do you believe and trust in God, the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? Do you believe, believe and, and trust, trust in him? Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe, we believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit or kneel as we pray for the church, the world, our community, all in need, and for those who have died. Let us pray. God of love and compassion, you are always more ready to hear and to help than we are to pray. Help us to know that you are with us now and always. Jesus, we pray for the church, your body here on earth, in its many forms and throughout the world. Help us bring hope to our local communities and to individuals. We pray for anyone seeking and inquiring, and especially those who joined the Churches Together online Alpha course last week. Father God, we cry out to you for our troubled world. Help us to trust that the world is in your caring hands and there is no sphere of life in which you are not involved. We pray especially for countries where coronavirus is affecting already desperately poor people, for Yemen, India and so many countries in South America. Guide world leaders as they make difficult decisions and help us to support the agencies and individuals bringing help and hope. Jesus, we pray for those who are ill, physically, mentally or emotionally, naming silently those we know. Bring them your peace in their pain, your strength in their weakness, your comfort in their sadness. As some families and friends are able to gather, we pray too for anyone who feels left out or alone, for those separated from people they love by distance, divorce, or death. Father God, may your love enfold them, your presence cheer them, your peace sustain them. Holy Spirit, refresh us, renew us, restore us, and so help us to be part of the answer to others' prayers. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In a moment we will share Christ's peace if you're with someone this morning, perhaps a hug or a kiss. And if you're on your own, please know that Christ's love is with you too. Please stand for the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and, and also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
I'm going to move to the table now. And while I consecrate this bread and wine here in church in obedience to our Lord's command, if you have bread and wine with you at home, then perhaps you'd like to place it on a table in front of you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son Jesus Christ to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was ended, he took the wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember that all that Jesus did, in him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ and in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Please sit or kneel as we pray the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in the one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Father, we thank you for feeding us at the supper of your Son. Sustain us with your Spirit, that we may serve you here on earth until our joy is complete in heaven and we share in the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ our Lord. We say together, Father of all, we give you thanks that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son, and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you've set before us, so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Please remember that you can stay connected during the week by logging onto our website ashbournechurch.org.uk where you'll find the weekly pew sheet and we are sending out some to those who don't have computers. Hopefully you'll get some guidance and spiritual help, a blog and much more. As usual we're going to hold a virtual coffee time on Zoom if you go to the front page of our website, you'll find the address. Click on it at 11.30 on Sunday morning and bring along a drink. See you there. One final notice, don't forget, we just started Alpha. There's still room. We have 18 people from across Ashbourne and quite a few from this church who are meeting on Zoom. If you can make it, there's still room. We'd love to have you. Please stand for the blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.